So let's recall what a stereoisomer is. So compounds are known as stereoisomers when they have the same exact molecular formula but different arrangement of atoms. So for example, we spoke about enantiomers. And enantiomers are compounds that have the same exact molecular formula but they're mirror images of one another. So enantiomers are one type of stereoisomers. In this lecture, we're going to talk about a second type of stereoisomers known as disteriomers. So let's begin by looking at the following pair of enantiomers. So here we have R enantiomer, and we, here we have the mirror image of this R enantiomer called the S enantiomer. Now I've omitted the actual groups, but let's suppose we have four different groups attached to each enantiomer. Now let's suppose we also have a second pair of enantiomers, a different pair, given here in blue. So we likewise have the R enantiomer and the S enantiomer. Now these two pairs are exactly the same. These two compounds are identical, R and R and S and S. So let's suppose we have a reaction. So a reaction takes place between this R enantiomer and these two R and S enantiomers. So we're not too worried about the mechanism, but we should know that a bond is formed between the carbon, this stereogenic carbon, and these stereogenic carbons. So in our first reaction, a bond is formed and we produce the RR compound. Let's call it compound A. And this R enantiomer then reacts with this S enantiomer to produce the RS compound known as compound B. The same exact thing happens with the S enantiomer, or the mirror image of this R enantiomer. So the S reacts with the R to produce the SR, let's say it's compound C, and then the S reacts with the S to produce our SS absolute configuration, compound D. Now, compounds A and B, and compounds C and D, so A and B and C and D, are not enantiomers. So these are not enantiomers, and these are not enantiomers, but they still have the same molecular formula. So they must be stereoisomers. We call these compounds A and B and C and D that are not enantiomers of one another, we call them disteriomers. So disteriomers are simply stereoisomers that are not enantiomers. Now, compounds B and C and A and D, so B and C and A and D are enantiomers. Because if we look at compound A, so what's the mirror image of the RR absolute configuration? Well, whenever we take the mirror image, we switch from R to S or from S to R. So RR becomes SS, so A and D are enantiomers, and RS becomes SR. R becomes S and S becomes R, so B and C are enantiomers. Now, look what we did. We essentially took our R, combined them with R and S to produce two different compounds. Then we took our S, we combined with S and R, the same S and R, to produce C and D. In other words, what we did is we combined two enantiomers, so a pair of enantiomers, to produce four different possibilities, four different stereoisomers. And in fact, generally speaking, whenever we have some number of stereogenic carbons to find the total or the maximum number of stereoisomers, we use the following formula, 2 to the nth power, where n is simply the number of stereogenic carbons in your compound. So, for example, let's take this compound, where we have two different stereogenic carbons. So that means since we have two different stereogenic carbons, our N is 2. So 2 to the 2 is 4. And that gives us four different possibilities for this compound, like we saw here. We got four different possibilities. So once again, this formula gives us the maximum number of stereoisomers when the compound has N stereogenic or chiral carbons as we saw here.